Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to record your screen or a webcam on your computer from start to finish. This is a beginner's tutorial for 2018 and onwards, so you don't really need to know anything about how to record videos for this video, and I'll try to explain it so that everybody can catch up. So first off, in order to record your screen or webcam or a combination of those two things, we're going to be using a free program called Open Broadcaster Software. You can pick this up at obsproject.com. I'm going to include the link in the description for this video as well. So you just need to click on the link, go here, and download the version that is associated with your operating system. If you're on Windows, you have to be using at least Windows 7, so that can be Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. And be sure to download it and install it just like you would any other program. When you open it up for the first time, you should see something like this, where you have a default scene over here on the left, and empty sources on the right. So the sources are the actual graphics that you pull in for your video, that can be images, video, uh, your desktop, or basically what's recording on your screen, what you want to record on your screen. And then over here further to the right, we have the mixer which is for controlling the audio inputs for your video. Now that can include your desktop audio. It can also include your microphone information. Um, as you see here, I have a mic that's currently set up for OBS. And while I talk into it, we can see the sound levels responding pretty much as we would expect. So now that we're here, to do an initial setup, we can start adding sources. In. So I'm going to show you how to add in the display capture, that's your entire desktop, window capture, where you capture one specific window on your computer, that could be the web browser, as we see behind here, I have the Brave web browser open, and it can also be your video capture device, in other words, your webcam. So we'll try adding all three of these in. With the sources box over here, we can either click the plus sign to add in a video source, or we can right click, go to add, and choose the video source that we're looking for. So here I'm going to choose Display Capture. I'm going to just leave it default name, Display Capture. And what you'll have here is the ability to select your different computer monitors. So this is any display hooked up to your computer. Here we have Display Zero. And the reason it's uh, basically looping infinitely here is because since it's recording the entire screen, it's also picking up on OBS. And since OBS is showing the preview window, you get an infinite loop where it's showing uh, a capture of OBS within a capture of OBS within a capture of OBS and so on. So we can hit OK there, and you can be assured if you get this popping up, whatever programs you have on screen are going to actually show up in the video. Now for some people who only need to do a screencast, basically recording the programs you have on screen, this might be enough. However, I'm going to show you a couple other alternatives here. So let's move into the window capture. Now the difference between window capture and display capture is that you are recording one specific window on your computer, not the entire computer screen. So let's do a window capture here, and I'm going to select brave.exe as the window capture. And now as you can see, the Brave browser isn't quite working with OBS right now. So as an alternative to doing that, so as an alternative to the Brave browser, I'm going to use the Firefox browser and We'll go to the drop down list and I will choose. If you don't see it on the list, you might need to hit cancel and reopen this selector. Uh, you can do that, by the way, by double clicking on a window capture source. Choose the window and select Firefox.exe. If it's working properly, you should get the full window capture to pop up here. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now the window capture isn't perfectly conforming to our screen size, so what we can do is maximize the browser. And then that's going to change the dimensions of this window capture. We can further make it conform to our video output by holding shift at the bottom and scrolling it down to stretch it to the very bottom of the screen. Now that does change the ratio on the window browser a little bit, but it also allows the browser to go full screen for our video output. So whenever we have black space here, that's actually going to show up in the video. So make sure that whatever's in this preview window is exactly what you want in the final recording. Um, now that we have the web browser captured, 
I'm going to go ahead and hit add here and we'll do video capture device. So you can add in a new source here and I'm just going to choose the Lenovo Easy Cam here. That's my laptop's default webcam. I'm not going to really bother too much to set it up, but uh, you could do something like custom resolution here and make it, I don't know, 720p resolution. That would be 1280 pixels by 720. And when you have your uh, webcam captured, you probably want it to be smaller in a corner. So you can click on the source and you can drag it. As long as you have this red box around yourself, you can drag it wherever you want. You can click on the little circle corners to control the size and shape. So I'm going to scale this way down here and basically put it in the bottom right hand corner. Now, if you're getting a little bit more advanced, you can do things like actually set up a green screen behind yourself and then do what's called color or chroma key yourself out in order to remove the background from the video. Um, but I would say probably for most people showing the first video, they're not going to have anything like that. So that's a more advanced topic and we'll leave that out of this video uh, beyond that. So now we have our web browser, or if we use display capture, our entire desktop being recorded. We have a webcam in our video. And what we want to do before we do hit the start recording button on the right over here is to make sure that our output settings are going to match what we want. So in order to change the settings, we go up to the file menu, go to settings. Let's see here. Uh, output is probably where we're going to want to start. So Let's switch from the advanced output mode to simple here, because simple is what you're going to see when you first come in here. Unless you're streaming online, you can pretty much ignore the streaming information. So we're going to come down here to recording. The recording path is going to be where your videos are output to. It has to be a real folder on your computer. So if I have my username videos captures on Windows, you actually have to create the captures folder for it to properly record there. For recording quality, you can leave the default to high quality, medium file size. I found that works in pretty much all situations just fine. Recording format, depending on what video editor you're going to use, you may not want to use it defaulted to .flv files. You may want to change this to .mp4 for better compatibility. If you're using a video editor, especially ones like Adobe Premiere uh, CC 2018, you definitely want an MP4 because uh, FLV format is not going to be supported there. Besides setting your output path in the recording file format, you probably want to come down here to video. So by default, if you have a 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution uh, monitor, it's going to scale it down to 1280 pixels by 720 pixels for the output resolution. So where it says output scale resolution, that's the actual size of the video in your output. So if you want to have it maintain the full resolution here, you can change this to 1920 by 1080. And by doing that, you're not going to lose any detail in your output video, but it will take up more file space because it has a larger resolution. For common FPS values, uh, you may decide to change this from 30 to 60, but in most cases, having 30 FPS is perfectly fine, especially for YouTube. Um, 60 FPS is really only when you need to show a lot of movement, like if you're recording a game and you have a really strong computer that can support that. Besides that, you may want to set hotkeys so that you can start and stop recording without actually going into the OBS interface or down here in the bottom right in Windows. And you can click on these little icons here while OBS is running and right click start streaming or start recording as well as stop streaming and stop recording. Those are useful shortcuts as well. Uh, up to you how you want to do it. Uh, another option is just to hit start recording and then when you actually edit your video you just cut out the beginning part where you had OBS showing on screen. All three of those methods will work fine. Um, so let's see what else. We probably want to make sure that the desktop audio and the mic are set up properly. So. If you try talking into your mic and you don't see any sound levels here, you probably have the wrong uh, mic set to default. So what you might want to do here is click on the little settings gear, go to properties, and select your microphone from the list of microphones on your computer. If you hit OK there, as long as you don't have the microphone muted, this should have uh, basically two of these little half circles on the right, not an axe. Uh, 
representing that it actually is allowing that to go through. And you start talking, you should see the sound levels kind of like I do here. Uh, with desktop audio, if you have that enabled, if you have any sound playing in the background, basically on your computer, music, or whatever, that's all going to be picked up as part of your desktop audio. It's up to you whether or not you want to record that, but if you want to disable it, you just take those two half circles and turn that into a red X by clicking on it. Also, if you need to raise or lower your volume, you can drag the slider on these blue bars in order to do so. Now, uh, one more thing I'm going to suggest here is if you tend to get a lot of background noise in your microphone, what you can do is click on the gear and go to filters for the microphone auxiliary. And here you're going to see uh, basically audio filters on the left, and you can add in these audio filters to help you with your sound quality. So currently I'm using what's called Reaper filter, not really going to cover it in this video, it's a little bit more advanced. Um, but it's an alternative to using the default filters inside of OBS. It's also free, by the way, if you want to go ahead and check that out. But noise suppression and compressor can be added out of the default by clicking on the plus down here and choosing noise suppression and compressor. Um, so I will show my settings for noise suppression that I was using before, um, before I was using Reaper filter. Just taking the suppression level for the background noise and setting that to minus 60 de uh, decibels to get the greatest amount of background noise reduction. And with compressor, um, this is basically my setup. I think this is actually the defaults for the uh, OBS compressor, so you can basically just add that in and it, you might get a little bit better sound quality. Uh, test it before you actually do your full video. So you can record a video file for a few seconds go find it on your computer, open it up, make sure it sounds okay. Um, but you don't necessarily need the compressor. What the compressor does is if you have very loud sounds in your video, it'll try to bring the level of those loud sounds down to the rest of your audio content so that it's more or less at the same audio level, so it can be helpful. But as an alternative to that, you can go pick up the Reaper filter, but I'm not really going to go into that in this video. There's other tutorials on YouTube if you do need help with the Reaper filter. So anyway, um, that's pretty much got us set up for recording a video inside of OBS. We have a webcam, we have the window capture, or the display capture. We can toggle between those really easily. Uh, by the way, if you want to disable the source temporarily, just click on the eyeball here in the sources. Um, and whenever your preview window looks good to go, all you need to do is hit start recording. It's going to show stop recording with uh, basically turning the button from blue to red. And you should see the recording ticker show at the bottom. As long as you see that in your FPS here in the bottom right, that's frames per second, or how many frames of images are showing for every second video you're recording is stable, uh, you should be good to go. So when you're done, go ahead and hit stop recording. Now here's the location on my computer where we recorded that video file. So I'm just going to open that up real quick. Although I have the sound muted, you can see that it in fact was recording the video we set up. By the way, if you want to get better quality with your webcam, actually go out and purchase a good webcam. This laptop webcam I have right here is just an out of the box one. Usually if you want good quality, you need to get a real one by purchasing it. So in any case, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I've done a good job of showing you guys how you can record a video uh, using OBS completely for free. That may include a screencast or your webcam. I hope you guys were able to follow along. And one last thing before we go here. If you just want to record yourself in the video and you don't need to screencast at all, just make your webcam full size. So if you just stretch your webcam to the full size of the screen, and your webcam is actually good enough to get a good recording, then when you record, it's just going to be the talking head video and nothing else. But aside from that, that's going to be it for this video. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in some of my future tutorial content.